Good morning. So this is um, about measuring and analytics and how to do, or at least how we're learning to do analytics in Drupal. Um, I'm Ronald, CTO of uh, BlueSpark, and we're, we're a Drupal shop. We're actually headquartered in the US, with about half our team is in Europe. Um, and in addition to doing Drupal sites for other people, we have like two internal products, which are quite different. Uh, Italy Magazine is, is an online magazine, um, and a lot of the work that we're doing on analytics is out of our need to measure what's going on with the magazine and how people are using it and what they're reading and so on. And then we're also working on uh, Roomify, which uh, you'll find a, a module on Drupal.org called Rooms that does hotel bookings. Um, so if, you, if you're into that, it's a good thing to check out. OK, so what are we going to talk about? Data. Um, so let me show of hands how many people use some sort of analytics tool daily. Cool. And how many of you uh, are actually using Google Analytics? Excellent. Um, and is that, uh, is that for marketing purposes, SEO purposes? Let's go marketing, SEO. OK. Cool. Just get a sense. So, yeah, information is important, right? And um, the, the main challenge is to, to convince people about any misconceptions they have about how their site is performing. Um, so, given that you use analytics quite a bit, how many people use analytics to test the, um, the performance of carousels? And how many people have sites with carousels? There you go. <laughs> and it's, it's, it, I mean, carousels is an easy target. Um, everyone likes them. Everyone wants them. 90% of the time, they're completely pointless. And if you actually track the data, you'll see that. There are, however, uh, a small amount of cases where carousels are actually the right solution and they're more efficient than anything else. Um, so when we, when we talk with a client, um, it's, sometimes it's tough, right? It does feel a bit, a bit like um, an inquisition. Because um, they're quite happy with their site. Um, they, they think they know how it works and why it works and what doesn't work and what needs to be fixed. And then you go in and you start asking all sorts of questions and uh, you're saying, but did you measure that? You know, wh where's the proof and so on? Um, but it's a necessary process. It's, it's the only way to, to actually improve things. So what we're roughly going to talk about, and this is almost self-evident, is you know, collecting data, um, how we can uh, create reports out of that data, analyze it, take decisions, and uh, act on decisions. Right. And it is a lot about nice reports. But not, I think this is quite important. Not, you know, it doesn't mean that because you can measure something, you need to measure it. Right? Not everything that can be counted counts. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and there are a lot of fuzzy things that you can't actually measure. So the way we approach it is to try and find a balance between measuring the things that we, we hope are the, the right things, but allowing some space to, to just try um, what we think is just cool. Um, and it's not necessarily you know, completely backed by data. 
I think one of the, uh, one of the most often used um, extremes of uh, relying on data is, is um, Google trying to decide what shade of, uh, I think blue it was or something, would be the right shade for their page. Um, and then they had this internal struggle between designers that were saying, let's just go with what you know, we think looks nice versus um, you know, the, the data-driven crowd were saying, no, let's just measure all shades of blue and the one that works best we go with. And that's maybe just taking it a bit overboard. You have to allow some space for um, creativity that doesn't depend on data. So the first task is picking a tool. If you're going to measure data, how are you going to do it? Now, Drupal, bless it, has the statistics module. How many people use the statistics module? Excellent. <laughs> no one, in case you're wondering. Um, so we saw how many people use Google Analytics. Who uses something that is not Google Analytics? And who uses P week. One, two, come on, three. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to base everything on P week. Um, that's the um, our preferred tool for a number of reasons. Um, there's obviously a whole number of um, I don't know what's the right word, ethical, moral legal reasons for holding on to your own data and PeeWeek is an open source analytics tool. Um, you manage it yourself. So uh, if, if those things are important to you and sometimes literally legally they are very important, um, this is a way to go. It has evolved over the past uh, six years at least to, to become a quite powerful tool. Um, it's not, it's not as powerful as, as Google Analytics. There's just not as many features. Some things are better. It's missing a lot of things. And obviously, one thing that, that Google is currently doing quite a bit is using all the other data it has to tell you things about your data, which is a huge carrot to send your uh, data to Google because it can put it in relationship with everything else that it knows about uh, people and how they're using sites and demographics and so on. Um, but for, for some very specific cases, um, PeeWeek is really the only option you have. And we'll, we'll see a few of that. In general, the concepts are the same. Um, if you get Google Analytics, you'll get a P week from a technical perspective. They follow the same approach. So P week has uh, an analytics API. It has a tracking API and um, lots of clients to access uh, its, um, its data and to, to put data in, take reports out, and so on. Um, and it's actually everything that PeeWeek does as a tool on its own is just using its APIs. So anything you can see on the PeeWeek interface, you're able to, to access via an API. And at the very bottom layer, it's just a PHP application. So it's, it's pretty easy to integrate in your application. Um, you can write plugins for it and so on. Uh, it also has support for image-based tracking, uh, which I actually only found out about uh, yesterday because uh, someone was asking about it, so check. Um, so it, it does the, the one by one uh, pixel uh, you know, invisible GIF that uh, tracks. Obviously, it, cannot, it can track less than JavaScript, but uh, it has that. And you can even directly import your server logs into PeeWeek and have it uh, analyze those. So let me just quickly show you how it looks. Um, this is it. It's, um, 
kind of nice. The PWIC 2.0 got released a few months ago. It has a nicer interface. And, you know, it does all the things you would expect from an analytics tool to do. Nice reports. Um, it has all the main things dealing with visitors, actions, referrers. You can manage campaigns, e-commerce, goals. It, it, it's, it's really quite powerful. I mean, um, uh, while, while Google Analytics iterates very quickly, uh, PWIC does a pretty good job of uh, keeping up and, as I said, sometimes actually doing things better. This is what the, the tracking code for the JavaScript-based tracking code looks like. And if you've uh, ever seen the, the Google Analytics tracking code, it's, it's very similar. Um, the two important things to keep in mind here is that you can, you can either have uh, asynchronous or a synchronous call. So asynchronous um, will allow your page to, to load, and it's not going to delay that. Um, and the, the, the concept is that uh, you have a stack of events um, and you're just pushing events on this stack and then they get sent to Peewee. Right, so it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> you can write plugins for it um, to, do, to extend pretty much everything. It's, Quite good with JRP tracking if that's important, although you need to work a bit um, to get that. Yeah, you need to import some IP, um, JYP database, and it, it actually has support for that built right in uh, to help you through the process like a little wizard. Um, and I guess the one downside if you don't have um, access to your own servers is once you get to busier sites, you need to fiddle with it a bit to get it to be performant. So out of the box, it will do things like every X amount of seconds, it's just going to analyze the data and archive it so that it can show you the latest reports. And that's obviously quite costly. So you, you need to do simple things like um, set that up so that it happens on cron. Uh, P weeks version of Chrome, essentially. There are, there are some um, Drupal projects for this. Um, the the P week project is essentially a mirror of the, the Google Analytics project. Um, and let me just show you that real quick. So you put in your, your site ID, your URL, um, a good set of um, settings here. You can handle custom variables, which we'll talk quite a bit about. And you can also add some custom JavaScript code um, to get executed along with PWIC. There's also PWIC reports, which is, it's nice if you're, I guess if it's a smaller site, we don't really use it that much. Um, it essentially embeds all the PWIC reports within the Drupal site. If, if the site is, is a truly busy site, it's, um, it, it can get tricky and it can get slow. And this just throws everything there. Uh, something we'll talk about is um, you know, working on creating the right reports for, for people. Yeah, so that's PWIC report. Okay, so uh, when, when it comes to analytics, there's so many things you can talk about. Uh, so this is my way to try and structure what we will talk about here uh, in, uh, as uh, first section. So we're going to play a game. Follow that node, right? Um, Nodes are the, the basic pieces of content in our site. And what we want is to get uh, as much information as possible about how they're used. So 
So the first thing is um, just visits to the node page itself. Um, who visited it, where from, where did they go next, and, and so on. Um, and is this something you look at when you use Google Analytics? Do you actually break it down and, and try to, to follow this path? And actually, the, the real question is, do you find this is easy? Show of hands. You will love Peewick. Like, literally, no one raised their hands. Um, Peewick has perhaps its best view is uh, the, the Peewick transitions view, which is just wonderful. Um, so let, let me just show you this in action. Uh, it's such a great idea. I don't know why Google Analytics doesn't do it. Um, so I, I just set up the site, created some stuff with um, um, Devel. They have this node, right? Uh, it has its URL, content slash arrows. Um, you have uh, an internal link there. You have an external link. Do some visits on it. Click on this stuff. Now you can go to Peewick um, pages. Uh, let me just talk about this, the way it breaks stuff up. So, Peewick tries to understand the structure of your uh, URL, the hierarchy, and it kind of divides things based on that hierarchy. This is something you can switch off if it doesn't make sense for your site. In this case, we'll find the page under um, content because it was slash uh, content slash arrows. And this is the transitions view here. And actually, hold on. Let me just make sure I'm getting the latest stuff. That was on yesterday's. Okay. So this is a transitions page, and it's it's a very well designed infographic. It tells you who's coming in, what happened, uh, page reloads, and where did they go. And then you can actually um, follow these things through, especially if they're internal links. So I can see, you know, they went to the lander view or they went to this node. I can click that. And it's, it's going to take me to the, to the transitions view of that page. So I can follow paths through the site and see what's going on. Um, very, very handy tool if, if you're just uh, you know, interested in how one page behaves. And by the way, if you have any questions, just interrupt me. It's, uh, it's fine. So, okay. that. so that's great. Next thing is uh, bigger picture. Right? So we can an analyze individual pages, and that's typically fine for the smaller sites. Um, what happens when you have you know, thousands of nodes and uh, you're trying to, to view them. And to give you an example, I mentioned Italy Magazine before. Uh, so Italy Magazine is, uh, is a site that um, um, talks to people that are in love with Italy, Italophiles. Um, there's quite a few of them around the world. And there's um, four overarching topics, food and drink, culture, travel, and life and style. Right? So as we're writing content, it typically falls into one of these four overarching topics, and then it has like tags and other stuff and so on. 
And because we're talking about a country, it's, you know, we're talking about food and drink in uh, Florence or Rome and so on. So you have, at the very least, two dimensions you're interested in, location and topic. And when we're analyzing um, statistics, we want to know how many people are actually reading food and drink stuff in general. Right? We don't care which uh, food and drink store at that point, we just want in general. Or how many people are into stuff that has to do with uh, Tuscany. So doing this sort of segmentation. And the, the great thing about uh, both PWIC and Google Analytics and so on is actually very simple to do that, especially with the way that it integrates in, in Drupal. Um, there's two components to it. Custom variables. So custom variables are, uh, is information, data, that you can send to the analytics tool. That is, it's, it's specific to your application, right? It's domain specific. It's, uh, it's the stuff that makes sense just for you. It's not the general stuff like page, visits, geographic location, and so on. So within um, Drupal, you can actually use the PWIC module to set up custom variables. And in this case, I'm using, uh, let me just show you this on the, on the Drupal side. So just did one variable called category, and I'm using uh, tokens. So in, in this case, my node has um, one um, term reference associated with it, and I'm just putting that in the custom variable. Then you can also define the scope of the custom variable, that, and it's two things, either page or visit. So, you know, whether it should hold across an entire user's visit. Oh. The content to get the variable. Oh. Um, this, this is actually work that uh, the, the PWIC module does. So it's, um, it's not very intelligent. Sorry? Yeah, it's kind of like that. I haven't actually looked at the PWIC code for that because essentially once you start doing more complicated things, you, you're going to want to move away from <laughs> the standard PWIC uh, module and manage that JavaScript code yourself and inject much more context into the page. Uh, in this case, it's, it's doing basic stuff. So if it's on a node and it can get that term, it does it, and then it's, it's going to be confused. So the, the module on its own is not going to handle that. You have to custom build that. Yeah, yeah. Um. Cool, so you set up your, your custom variable, and then in, um, if you go to PWIC, and we go to custom variables. We have here category. And here it's just telling me this are the categories, uh, names that Devel came up with, um, that people visited. So now what you want to do is um, look at all of your data on the basis of people that visited, um, say, pages with canolos as a category, um, quite funny because that sounds like a Sicilian suite, cannoli, um, sorry. Uh, and, and see all of your data based on that. So what you do is create, let me just go to the pages section. You can create a segment. And segments are a very powerful thing, very useful to, to work with. So what you're saying is, I want to segment my data based on the fact that 
the, 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 the visits I'm looking at are um, with, within that flow, you had the custom variable, its value for the scope page containing canolos. Right? And you can do that uh, in a number of different ways. And obviously, you can segment your data not just on custom variables, but on uh, analytics specific things. Right? So it's, it's a very useful tool. So, for example, you can, if you want to look at um, like just your top users, um, you can set the, the number of uh, actions or the number of pages seen to a higher number and just have a view of all your data on the basis of how many, um, um, on the fact that those are your active users. They're the ones that you know, spend most time on the site. And you can chain things and do ors and ends and so on. Um, so we save that. And now, obviously, in this case, it's, it's, it's very simple because it's just an example. But I'm having all my data across everything. Um, so even going to, let's see, stuff like exit pages and so on. It's all um, filtered based on that segment. So now I can actually uh, take something like, you know, I want to see how people that are interested in Tuscany as a location, in the case of Ethnic Magazine, um, are behaving across the entire site. So it's bigger picture stuff. Does that make sense? People have questions about that? So uh, with PWIC, it's, uh, let's say in this specific case, it's literally on my machine. Um, but you can install PWIC on any server of yours. Uh, it's PHP and MySQL. And um, it will work with Varnish. There are certain things, um, once you want to do, not so much the, the, the tracking part, but the reacting to things part, where varnish becomes caching in general becomes a bit of a problem. Um, but overall, because all this is JavaScript based, um, everything you do, all the information you send back is coming from um, the, the JavaScript code. The more stuff you want to inject into the page, the more you want to think about what caching you have. So for example, if um, all I want to do is inject category, location, uh, and maybe a couple of other tags, and set those as custom variables, and those are not user dependent, they're, they're server dependent, right? You, you know it, you're doing it on the server, and you're sending it then through Varnish to the user, that's fine. If you actually want to do something that is user dependent and get that back, that's a bit more complicated. You have to do all of that in JavaScript. Any other questions about this? OK. So now I know for a single node what's going on with the transition view. I can uh, look at groups of nodes and know what they are doing. But there's still one thing that I'm missing, which is how do nodes behave when they're being seen as a group on a page? And this is where things become a bit more complicated. And I'm just curious. So obviously, I mean, I'm pretty sure we are all using views and building lists and so on. Is anyone tracking how many times nodes appear on lists and what happens with those nodes when they got clicked and so on. OK, so you, you, no one. Uh, you might find this interesting. Essentially, the idea is uh, to treat every single 
impression of a node on any list as an advertising banner impression, right? You want to know exactly what's going on. Um, and it's, there's a number of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you something that we can actually go through in the next few minutes. Uh, but then you'll you get the idea of how this is, is working. Um, so we're going to need custom variables. Custom variables are your friend because you can actually send domain-specific information. In this case, we're going to look at uh, lists that have uh, images. So we're actually going to track when the image gets loaded. We need to know the position of the item on that view. And we need to know when that thing was clicked. OK. And let me just show you the view that we're actually going to be tracking. It's this here. So it's just standard view. I did nothing special in terms of uh, uh, views per se. The one thing that I changed is um, the rendering. Because we actually need to do a bit of work with JavaScript, um, this, uh, this node are um, rendering that's managed by a C tools content type. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I keep asking questions, you know, hands up, down. How many people know what C tools content types are? So let me, let me explain a, a bit. Um, C tools content types is a way for um, for us to, to add custom, I guess, information within um, panels mostly, keeping it very simple as an explanation. So what we do here is in our view, what we're actually showing is a rendered entity. And I think the setting is here. And the view mode is a teaser view mode. Now this teaser view mode is, um, is created by, it's really, uh, hold on, this stuff here. So this is a C tools content type. It's a little C tools plugin. And um, I'm using Panelizer across the site. So I'm telling Panelizer to take over the teaser mode. So I'm setting up my node with a panel, and I'll show you that. And then I'm just telling it to render my C tools uh, content type. And what I'm doing here is two things. I'm, I'm essentially I'm, I'm having to recreate a bit work that Drupal does for free. So stop like theming the image and uh, doing links and so on. But the reason I'm doing it is because I need to do this. So push on the uh, PWIC event stack custom variable value for an impression. And um, on click, send another variable saying a node has been clicked. Let me just connect all the dots for you. On the one hand, you have um, within the node, panelizer, uh, the teaser view mode in content. The only thing I'm showing is a trackable image. Now, in this case, I'm using panels because we, we, kind of, we do a lot of work with panels and so on. There's any number of different ways you could do this. You could do it in TPL files. And, uh, the important thing is to be able to control the rendering of the, um, of the content and be able to inject this, uh, this information. So 
so that you can actually send stuff back to Peewee. Yeah. Um, the, the image here is like literally the. Um, this image. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Okay, so the, the question is if I didn't have an image, what could I use? I could use a transparent image. I could, um, yeah, it, it, you can use any number of things really. It's um, um, any jQuery event that you can react to and just send the information back to, to Peewee. Um, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, you have your, uh, your panel here. So now where we are is when we're on this view, we're actually sending PWIC some information. We're saying images got loaded, and if someone clicks on the image, track that event. Right. So we're almost there. The one thing that we're missing is where in the list our image is because we actually want to know are people only clicking on you know the first stories and everything else is irrelevant are people paging and clicking on that those those are the really interesting things and I'll tell you how we're using that information on, on, on Italy magazine um, now that information where we are on the list is is not with our panel when we're rendering the thing. The individual content doesn't know where it is. It's just being rendered, right? The only um, thing that knows where it is is views. So we just, it's kind of a trick. There are other ways to do it. This is a very easy way to explain. Um, we, in our code, we set up this fake token, right, which is index. Then when views is going to render this thing, um, I have that here. So this is the, the views template for a grid because we're using a grid now. I'm just telling it replace index with the actual position. Right, so when once all the HTML gets down to views. I'm telling it, take out that index and put, me, put in the actual position this thing is going to show up in. The end result being that if I look at this, and I have the position there. So with this kind of tricks, um, taking over the rendering of the content, um, telling views to inject back in the position of the content. I can um, track views across pages as if everything was a single banner. And going into PWIC, uh, let me just take the segment out. custom variables, have my impressions here, and now I actually know for every given node how many times they showed up, how many visits each node had, and so on, on views. So how many impressions these things have. Uh, so that's one variable. The other variable is the clicks. So I can see how many uh, things got clicked. And just to show you the, actually prove that it works, click on a few things. Uh, hold on. Let's click on something I probably never clicked before.
551. Yeah, so the impressions are up and my clicks are didn't show the click, it probably needs to work on the data to show it, but um, that's the idea. You know, as you're review, re refreshing the entire view, you get things tracked. Yep. Very good question. Um, messy. <laughs> and, and what you need to do then is, uh, so this is simplifying it quite a bit, you actually want to think about how you're setting your custom variables so that um, maybe you take this information and process it further. So you break it, you actually do like a little hierarchy and you break it into, you know, how many times did this thing show up um, then take out the position and you can see for each position exactly what happened and so on. Any other questions? Cool. So let me just quickly, well actually let's, let's go on and um, then I'll talk a bit about how we're using these things on Italy Magazine. Um, so that's, that's, that, that covers almost everything you have to worry about in terms of nodes in Drupal. You can do the individual node, you can look at nodes as groups and track that across the site, and you can also look at, at um, nodes as um, kind of things that are independent of the node page itself. So when nodes appear anywhere else on the site, and you know, take this to its full extension, and what you're doing is almost for all your view modes, you're thinking of how is this going to translate into tracking uh, in PeeWeek or Google Analytics or whatever it is you're using. And let me actually, let me just show you. So what we're doing in, um, on Italy Magazine with this is um, thinking about our, our main landing pages in terms of um, independent pieces of um, data and uh, trying to adapt to what users are doing. So we, our landing pages are split into three sections. You have feature stuff here, you know, latest uh, items and so on. And then we have this uh, list of just general stuff. And the, the, the spots that are empty are banners um, that I'm avoiding to see, but all our users should, should see and click. Uh, <laughs> so, each one of these things is a, a collection of, uh, it's either nodes or, or groups of nodes and so on, and the whole thing is a node queue. And what we're doing is tracking the information, saving it, and then um, on cron, figuring out how should we change this node queue. So, you know, what is popular, what is trending, all that stuff, what should we inject into it and keep adapting to that. Um, the, the ultimate objective is to actually apply some, some learning on this, right? So you don't just react to very basic things like, you know, this piece of content has been popular over the entire week, so make sure it's on the front page because new people coming to the site will probably click on it. Uh, but also doing things like the users that are coming from here uh, tend to like this sort of things, so adapt all the different node queues uh, or, you know, lists of any time to their interest. So if you're seeing that someone is, uh, is just exploring the site, thinking about um, traveling to Italy and they're, they're just looking at different places and so on, try and adapt to that. 
Now, the first step to doing that is actually having the data for it. So that's what we're spending time on now. Cool, almost done. Um, then the, the next thing, and this is something we're doing for, for some clients, uh, in this case it's a university library, is pulling that stuff out of PWIP and showing it to them in a way that's directly relevant to them. Um, and in this case, what we're doing is um, using a very nice little field called serialized field that just lets you uh, save stuff in a note. And we have Cron going to PWIC, uh, getting some information. The information is actually quite complex to get because what we're showing the user here is the usage of a certain resource, like a link to a collection of journal articles and so on, across the site. So how many people looking for stuff in the education library actually visited this resource? Uh, how many people looking for stuff within different subject areas visited this resource? So that librarians, who their, their main job is to make sure that their users can find the information they're looking for, can react to it. And this is really all they need at the most basic level. You don't need to send them to PWIC or show them graphs or have them segment themselves. You just pull the stuff out and show it to them. And the reason we're not embedding PWIC information directly here is because we use this in views and uh, lots of different places. So it, it makes sense to have it within Drupal so that we can play around with it. So you, you track stuff, um, we've seen a few ways how to do that, then you, um, you pull that stuff back out and show to users just what they need to do what they need to do. The other huge um, thing that I'm, I'm not really going to uh, spend too much time on is A-B tests or multivariate tests or tests of any sort. Right? Um, there's, there's quite a bit in, uh, in Drupal, um, and uh, I'll just, I have absolutely no relationship with Acquia, but I'll, I'll plug their product they, <laughs> because it's really interesting. Um, they came out with this uh, thing called Lyft, um, which is trying to streamline the process of doing A-B tests. Um, I haven't looked into it very much, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's um, going to bring more expertise into Drupal. The one thing that it's worth thinking of is there's actually a whole number of different ways to do it in Drupal, and if you have control of your, of your own data, sometimes you don't need to go to outside sources to do it. You can, uh, panels is really powerful for this thing, so you can do little access plugins that um, cause Drupal to select different variants of pages to show users. And if you hook that up with uh, custom variables or goals or campaign data and so on, you, you just have it right there. It's, it's actually not that hard to do. Um, or you can play around with uh, thinking of node queues as uh, temporary storage that not only users interact with, but your code interacts with. So every uh, so often you have it update the node queue and again, keeping track of everything, you, uh, you push things into an analytics tool and then you can get it out and act on it. Right? Um, And then you can actually make sensible decisions, right? Um, that's it. <laughs> Questions?
So the, the question was, um, is there any um, sense in the idea of using more than one uh, tracking tools? And I can tell you on Italy Magazine, we have five different services tracking page views. So we have Google Analytics, we have PWIC, uh, we actually have a little thing called Get Clicky, uh, just because we like the graphs it produces. We have Quantcast, and then we have our own banner serving tool, which is external to Drupal, tracking all of that. Once you, know, you, you, you shift into using data to take decisions, you, at a certain point you can't have enough of it. And no tool is perfect. So depending on the view they give you into uh, your, your site, you go for it. There's obviously, you have to think of performance and so on, but there's solutions around that. Sir, can you repeat that?